I'd already been a, been a citizen of this country thinking and being told that you were innocent until proven guilty. Well, that just just said in simple English. She used a few legal words I didn't understand, but he says, you're going to be guilty, assumed guilty, and you're going to have to prove yourself innocent. We had had fresh snow, deep powder snow up on top, and powder snow as opposed to heavy snow with a lot of moisture in it. Well, when the wind came up, it was blowing probably 50 to 60 miles an hour. That's nothing for that to be up there. In other words, that's a normal thing that can happen up there. And it comes up without any, there's no notice. You can't see anything coming. You, it just happens, kaboom. And so when that does it, we have an instant blizzard. Robert just leaned up against the tree down there and he says, that's it. He says, I can't go anymore. And I said, well, we've got to keep going. I mean, it is downhill. If we get near the bottom, I know what canyons are like. It's going to get better. We don't know how far we have to go. And, and pretty soon he just leaned up against the tree, says, I can't go anymore. That's it. You go on. And he says, send the people back. When you get out, send somebody back. See if I'm still alive or not. We'd been up there for two days and two nights. Way below zero weather. Probably, what, 80% chance that we were going to die. Wasn't going to make it. Beat up all the heck, but we did make it. Once I got healed up from that uh, getting lost in the mountains deal, I needed to get my snowmobile out. I had a brand new snowmobile that had quit, was still in the mountains somewhere. So I went down and, and I had heard that there was a wilderness area up there, not where we would normally go snowmobiling and nobody knew where it was. But if it's somewhere, ah, the snow, the National Forest people, the Forest Service people, are always good friends. They're nice people. So I went to them, said, hey, I'm going to go into the mountains. If you guys have a problem, get somebody to come with me. Or better yet, come and help. If what you tell me is true, he says, you were in the wilderness approximately one-fourth one quarter of a mile, one fourth of a mile where you spent the night. I said, well, I don't even know where I spent the night. We just guessed. I was charged with illegally operating a motor vehicle, recreating in, in a wilderness. Now, that sounds awfully fancy, but there is an exclusion for this, too, that the people should remember. The United States Congress, when they wrote the rules for this, put a clause in there, and I won't quote the exact words, but, it, but it's for emergencies. Now, if I wasn't in an emergency, what was I in? His table is way in the back from the front door, okay? And so I'm sitting there having breakfast with him. And all of a sudden, there starts being a line of human beings all the way to the door and, and, and a little bit out the door, all United States senators. And I got tears in my eyes. I mean, they all, wanna, they all are standing in line to shake my hand. And, and make me feel good. Because, yeah, I got a federal fight. But they're all behind me. None of them are going to fix my ticket. None of them is going to, going to get that judge. None of them is going to get the Forest Service people that were really trying to hurt me. Nothing like that. 
but they're going to do good, hopefully in the long run.